Hey everybody, so update on the bench work. I've got the tabletop painted and I've got the road bed painted. Paint is still wet on there, so I gotta let that dry. Um, one thing I wanted to cover in this video is there isn't real any real good video out there on how to install a Walters turntable. There's a few out there, um, I've watched many of them, but there's not a complete series on how to actually fully install a Walters turntable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how I did it. It's not necessarily the right way, it's not necessarily the best way, it's just one of the options you can use. Um, in installing this turntable, it's going to be several parts. The first part I'm going to go over is how I cut the hole, how I got everything set up to mount the actual turntable. Then we'll go into how we mounted the track, how we hooked up the wiring, how we installed the bridge and everything like that. Okay, so let's get started. So on the first part of the layout here, you can see I have a hole cut for the turntable. Now initially, I made this hole too small. When I initially cut this hole, it was an inch too small which as you would figure was a serious problem when I went to go put my turntable in and it wouldn't fit in the hole. Uh, I realized I measured wrong. You know, we're all human, we make mistakes. So then I had to come up with a way to fix that and how to recut the hole, but get that perfect circle again. So what I did is I actually took the original piece that I cut out. Let's see if I can wedge this back in here. And I put a board across it and I got it pretty much centered as best as I could. Um, obviously the other piece was in here too, um, but I got it centered. I got all the cut lines straightened out and then I used my original hole in the center and I drew a new line. And once I drew the new line, I unscrewed this piece here, this piece of wood, the center piece, and then I recut the new hole. So now we got the hole to the right size that it's supposed to be. Like they say, measure twice, cut once. I didn't do that. All right, so next. I had to bring the turntable up to the level of the cork road bed. Now what I could have done is I could have put down sheet around this whole area of the staging yard. I chose not to do that. My staging yard is very much a practice bed for me. Since this is going to be quote unquote hidden staging, I'm doing a lot of things on here that I'm not going to do or I'm going to do on my regular layout as a means of practice um, to get my techniques right. If I screw up something on the hidden staging, nobody's going to see it. It's quote unquote hidden. It's not going to be a big deal. So if I practice here, then when I work on the real layout, I know what worked and what didn't. So let me grab the turntable and show you what I did. Now on the Walters turntable, we have this IR sensor here that runs all the way up to the circuit board that is inside here. And if you flip the turntable over, you can see that sensor there. Now that sensor is where the bridge section calibrates itself and aligns itself once you set this thing up. And the area parallel to it, excuse me, perpendicular to it, is your no track zone. So wherever this sensor is, your no track zone goes perpendicular to it. So if you have the sensor here, you can't have any trains or any tracks, excuse me, in this area. If you'd have the sensor here, this would be your no track zone. Well, that would be a problem. So the way this works is the trains come down with their loads out of my main layout, out of Manitowoc. They drop their trains, drop their consists, get on the bridge, turn around, and then they go out whatever empty track there is. So for the sensor, we had to notch out the plywood back here. So I made a little notch with the jigsaw, and that's to, to accommodate the sensor. Now, I used cork to bring the turntable up to the same level of the roadbed. All I did was take the regular cork roadbed, I cut it down the approximate thickness of the lip of the turntable, put it down around with uh, wood glue and tacked it down. I gotta be careful not to set this, set this turntable down because that's still wet paint over there. I don't need a black turntable. All right, 
on the bottom of the turntable, we have these mounting pins that go all the way around. Now, some of them you won't be able to use, um, or at least I won't. The one where the sensor is, there's no way. I mean, if you look at that really closely, you can see where the sensor is, you can see where the mounting pin is. You can't really get a screw through there and drill a hole and still have wood left to really mount that. But one pin out of, I believe, eight is not gonna be a big deal. And besides, I'm gonna glue and screw this down so we won't have any issues there. Now what I did is in the cork road bed, I made, I took uh, um, routing bits, not routing bits, uh, chamfer bits, and I chamfered out all these holes. These are where the mounting pins sit. As you can see, I do have a screw hole back here, but I'm not gonna be able to use it to mount the turntable. And I won't be able to use the one up here and the one over here. And I think there's another one. Not a huge deal. Like I said, I'm going to be using the screws and glue to hold this down. I'll put weights on it. We're going to use a latex glue. Um, so everything will be firm and in place. Now, if you go underneath the layout, I did the same thing. I used a chamfer bit and I cleaned out all these holes just a little bit. This is half inch plywood. I did not go all the way through. I went about a quarter of the way through. So what that allows is that allows for when you set your turntable in, let's go ahead and set this in. I might get a little paint on one of the mounting pins, but that's okay. So we're gonna set it in. Get it lined up, try not to get paint on myself or the turntable. Now it's not all the way down, but it's down, okay? As you can see, we got a little gap there for the IR sensor. Now what that means is right now the mounting pins are just about touching the plywood. Now the original screws, let me see if I can grab them here. At least a couple of them. The original screws that come with it are only this long. Well, if you hold that on the edge of the plywood, well, let's find a good spot here. You can see that if we mount it with the washer and the screw, we're not gonna get through. Well, by cutting out that quarter inch and bringing that screw up, we're able to grab onto that mounting pin and lock on. Um, I didn't feel comfortable just gluing this in because it could still move left to right or something like that. Um, so with using latex glue, and we'll be using about six screws to hold this in, we'll be good. It's not going to go anywhere. And if I ever have to take it out, latex glue, we get a blade under here, uh, a putty knife or an X-Acto blade. We can pry that glue loose and pop it out. Um, anything else I wanted to cover right now? So, like I mentioned, we got the no track zone. And we got the bridge and everything like that. One of the crucial things that you have to do is, yeah, see, I did get a little paint on there. Not a big deal. Not the end of the world. One of the crucial things you have to be care of, careful of when you're installing these turntables is, one, do not get any dirt inside this hole. As you can see in there, there's metal contacts. So when you're building your layout, my suggestion is keep this turntable out. When you're creating dust, when you're sanding, when you're doing any type of work that's going to create dust, Keep the turntable in its box, don't have it out. If for some reason you do have to take it out and it has to be out when you're gonna install it and you're gonna be creating dust, put some tape over this, probably some masking tape, something that's going to uh, seal up good, but not, you know, take the paint off and you remove it. This turntable is painted. Uh, just so you guys know, they, they do put a gray paint on the outside here um, and the bridge and everything are painted as well. And also there is a sticker I don't want to say sticker, a cover on the IR sensor. Um, I think that's for if you're going to paint this, or excuse me, weather it. You leave that on there, do your weathering, and then take it off. You might want to make a smaller piece because that's a pretty big piece of tape on there. I'm not sure if you leave it on there or if you take it off when you're ready to use the turntable. I would assume take it off so it doesn't interfere with the bridge. However, um, it might be there for protection. If anybody knows for sure, uh, go ahead and comment on this video and let me know. 
Like I said, I'm not an expert on this. This is my first turntable install, but there isn't really a complete video out there on how to put these in. So I thought I would do one myself and share with you guys and hopefully it helps. Um, in the next video, we'll go ahead and install the turntable. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the tracks installed. One of the things that I did not mention when you're putting this turntable, and let me set this down. When you've got your piece in, when you're before you cut this plywood out, let me slip this back in here. Maybe. Gonna cooperate, maybe it won't. Go ahead and kick this layout out. Nice thing about movable bench work is if something's in your way, you can just move it. Alright. Get that back. So as you can see, or not, when I get this in here, you see all these lines on here. These are my track lines you mark them from the dead center point of your turntable. You have to do it that way. I can't stress enough. Walther stresses it, any turntable stresses it, turntable manufacturer stresses it. Your tracks have to come into the turntable on a straight line. Now, if you look here, <clears throat> my road bed looks a little wonky, like it's not gonna line up quite right. That's okay. We got a little bit of wiggle room where I can wiggle the tracks left and right. But this route coming off the turntable, right here, right here, right here, right here, all the way through, has to be straight. If you have a curve at the edge of the turntable, you're going to have problems. Your trains are going to derail. Bridge isn't going to line up right. You're going to have operation problems when it comes to running your trains. And you don't want that. Nobody wants that. We want our trains to run smooth. We want them to run well. We don't want to have any issues. So very critical, very critical that your track lines line up all the way through. Now what I did is I drew the lines far out all the way through. Then I brought my track lines straight through and I created that, that peak. And then since I designed my track plan on PC using any rail, I was able to actually print out these curves at full scale. And then what I did is I simply cut out the angle I laid the, the piece of paper down and then I just drew the lines. If that does not work, the other thing you can do, and I've seen this on Model Railroader, uh, MM, MRVP, some other websites, take a piece of this uh, hardboard, tempered hardboard, start at your straight route and then curve it into the other route. Now it's not gonna be exact, but no railroad is. So just meet the two together, get that nice gentle curve, and then either you draw the line if you can, or have somebody draw the line for you, and then they'll give you that nice easement in there. I think my curves on this outside track, I think the radius is 19 and a half, might be slightly under. But obviously it gets lower as it goes in with our center being straight. So uh, that's it for this installment of this video. If you have any questions, Go ahead and leave a comment. I'll try to answer it if I can. Like I said, our next installment, we'll install the turntable physically and we'll start setting up the track. Thanks for watching.